It's a story we've seen play out so many times over the last few years. One studio spends the time to create a game that is meant to entertain its audience, and another studio prioritizes including some weird message in their game. To the surprise of nobody in the entire world, the game that focused on entertainment blows up and fans love it, while the agenda-filled crap rots in the gutter. Black Myth Wukong is breaking Steam records with over a million players after a few hours of it launching. Meanwhile, Concord couldn't even get a thousand people to play on launch day. That is so deeply pathetic. If you're a certifiable idiot, then sure, it's a complete mystery why people aren't interested in playing Concord. You've got a lineup that looks like a DEI wet dream with fat chicks and old Asian ladies, and of course they all have their pronouns on their character select screen because of course they do. This one is by far the funniest. Imagine going into a mission and putting a soldier in charge of life and death decisions when they can't even look in the mirror and decide what the hell they are. These people are insane. The more you read about this studio, the worse it gets. When you see they hired a crazy feminist that forced co-workers to call them professor even though they weren't one and tried to get any co-workers who didn't get the jab fired, it's not hard to see how things went wrong. Only a deranged liberal with no real principles or beliefs can live in a delusional world where they hate guns but at the same time make a living off of a game that centers around guns. Where was it you graduated from again? Hmm? The University of Duh. They blatantly ignore all of the valid criticism of this game and just insult the people they should be begging to buy this pile of crap. Instead, they just keep trying to appeal to the mythical modern audience that never seems to show up when it comes time to support a product with money. When the backlash first started, apparently they brushed it off as white noise, and even now people who worked on the game are calling fans talentless freaks which is just a hilarious thing to call people, if this is the game, it took you 8 years to develop. 697 players? I've been on YouTube for a little over a year, and most of my videos get more hits than that. You guys suck at everything. These people are just not right in the head, so of course the product they put out is gonna reflect that. Then on the opposite side of that spectrum, you have Black Myth Wukong, which is breaking records with its player count. Over a million players within hours of its launch, and it's not surprising when you consider the incredible gameplay and graphics. The cherry on top is how little these developers seem to care about pushing an agenda. They actually had some reviewers and critics agree to not mention feminism or anything political when reviewing the game, and while I don't necessarily agree with limiting what people say, it shows how committed they were to entertainment over any kind of liberal agenda. What's funny is that as usual, all the woke idiots trying to bash this game for not conforming to the message actually boosted its popularity. Just like with Stellar Blade, when fans see these losers playing pretend and calling themselves game journalists go after a game for not being diverse and inclusive, they rush to check it out since that means it's guaranteed to not be a pile of woke garbage. We hate them. They make me sick. Imagine calling yourself a game journalist and actually lowering a game's score for not including enough female characters when it's a game about a monkey guy beating up monsters. Nothing is ever enough for these dorks, which is why you shouldn't even try pleasing them. Once they get their foot in, there's no closing that door. And that's obviously something the studio's founder understands. His studio has been labeled sexist because he dared to claim that biologically, a word that already sends liberals crying to their safe space, men and women want different things in life, and entertainment should be created with that in mind. As anyone who reads his statement can see, he doesn't hate women, he just understands how to make products for real gaming fans, not the crybabies who wouldn't buy a game even if it was literally called diversity and inclusion. As usual, game journalists just ran with the lies and tried to bury the studio alive. That crap might have worked in 2016, but people aren't falling for it anymore. To make things even worse, if the rumors are true, all of these hit pieces and reviews done in bad faith are because they refuse to pay a Sweet Baby Inc. type of consultant company $7 million to come in and ruin, sorry, sorry, I mean guide their game. These attacks were a pathetic attempt to extort the money out of the studio, but they stood by their values and it paid off. The timing is just perfect too. They're succeeding while another game that probably hired 10 of these consultant teams is failing. 
The bottom line here is that prioritizing an agenda over entertainment doesn't work anymore. Games like Stellar Blade and Black Myth Wukong continue to prove that gaming fans are tired of the West's obsession with politics and messaging. People don't want to play games where they can smell the crybaby liberal agenda, and in turn garbage like Suicide Squad and Concord fail miserably. Their game journalist buddies can pump out as many hit pieces as they want. They can call fans racists, incels, and misogynists, but the one thing they can't do is force people to reach into their wallets and buy a game, especially when fans know it's coming from a group of psychos who hate them.